What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Today I'm going to be breaking down once again the Great Pyramid of Giza. I should say pyramids because I'll be including the trio here. And what it has to do with sacred geometry. I got pi in here as well and the mystical arts as you know. I mean so that's kind of my, my methodology and they all fit folks inside these structures and what they're all about, the expressions of what all these land masses are all about. And I promise you, this is something you've never seen before. So here we go. My methods of decoding, as you know, I use the cards of illumination, the typical poker deck, the 52 cards, matching the 52 weeks of the year. There are four suits, four seasons. These are embedded into the Great Pyramid. Actually, all three pyramids. We're going to get into that. I also like to use, of course, the counterpart of the Cards of Illumination, the Tarot. And these are also embedded into the pyramids. And then, of course, things wouldn't be complete without using numerology, the science of numbers. And primarily, as most of you know my work now, these are the two primary ciphers that I use, these numerology ciphers, the English and the Chaldean. Of course, I use the periodic table, the elements of the periodic table, and these are embedded into the Great Pyramid and Pyramids. And of course, using pi and number empire getting prime numbers fibonacci numbers things like that so these are the pieces that i use to decode from my methods so you know folks here we go what i wanted to start with is rather simple stuff i mean the slopes most of you know but have you looked at the other two pyramids you know the smaller pyramid is 51 degrees which is a match of Khufu, the largest pyramid, at 51 degrees. Then, of course, you have Caffrey here in the middle at 53 degrees. And, of course, I put the elements there to match up. 51's antimony, 53's iodine, 51's antimony. And it is interesting that the one in the very middle, Caffrey, is the I am, the iodine. When you add those up, 51 plus 53 plus 51, you're going to get 155, and that is pi. Because 314th decimal digit is where 155 appears in the string of pi. Imagine that. You think they were using pi back then to build these things? What about adding up? Because you're like, oh, why would you put the elements there? If you're new to this, you know, why would you put the elements there? What do they have to do? They have everything to do with our reality. Because when you add up the atomic weights or masses, antimony's 120, this is one of antimony's weights, but antimony, the, most, the average is 121.760, iodine only having one, 126.904, and then a doubling of antimony. You add those up, and you get the number 370.424. 
And on the masculine side of the decimal, the 370, it appears at the 555th decimal digit in the string of pi. So as you can see, these have merit to them. What else is linked to the 555? Well, just a few days ago on June 4th, the Washington Monument got struck by lightning. That is 555 feet tall. I wonder why. So here's where it gets super interesting, folks. And that is the latitude longitude. The X marks the spot of these pyramids. And of course, they're located in different areas, so they're going to have a little bit of a different number outcome with their latitude longitude. The smallest pyramid has this latitude longitude. Notice they're the same on the masculine side. Masculine's on the left side of the decimal, decimal and the feminine's on the right side of the decimal. So 29.9725311279. I'm not going to read them all off, but nonetheless, here's the name of that pyramid. Menkor. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. If I'm not, my apologies, but Menkor is 30. Here's its latitude longitude. Caffrey is 23, and there's its latitude longitude. And then Khufu, the largest, is 27, and there is its latitude longitude. This is the one we're going to be measuring from quite a bit because it's the largest of the three. There's an aerial shot of the three pyramids, and when you add up the latitude longitude in total, including the feminine side of the decimal, look at the outcome that we get out. 183, which is tied to the 74th element tungsten. Of course, W is the 23rd letter, and you know, 23 is right there. The one in the middle, the one that's 53 degrees, the iodine. And, you know, they all three, they end up equaling 183. Folks, you know, I mean, are they, were they surveyors back then? Picking out these for specific reasons to match up with these numbers. I mean, these weren't even, some of these elements were not even in, in, in existence back then, history tells us. But yet as fate would have it, here we are, because the game of life, this world is fixed. And man is being used, as I always say. So here's a little bit further, folks. When we add up the latitude longitude of these pyramids, they're all 29 degrees and 31 degrees on the masculine side, all three of them. When we add up 29 plus 31, you're going to get the element neodymium, which is why Keanu Reeves was named Neo in the movie The Matrix. When you add up the total for the Great Pyramid, the largest pyramid, you're going to get 144. And that's what we want to talk about today. I'm sorry, you're going to get 61, excuse me, but you're going to, it's, it's linked to the 144. So the total latitude longitude of the Great Pyramid of Giza is 61.1134, but we're going to get into that. But folks, it's clear now that numbers encroach upon one another, and it looks like there's a tandem thing going on, just like the black and white yin-yang. Well, these numbers pair with one another. And of course, they're feeding this element right there because 60 plus 61 is 121 and that's antimony which is according to the royal society of chemistry the all-seeing eye of horus and folks is this not what egypt is all about What about the string of pi, folks? What does that have to say about everything? And this is where you got to break the digits up. This completely blew me away. 
When you take the number 60, matching the masculine side of the decimal, remember neodymium is magnetic, and you locate that in the string of pi, it's going to appear right there, 7,489, right there. That's the seventh out, right at where that zero ends, and then the separation point of the 60 and 61. If you were to separate these two, that's where you would do it. So the, the numbering in question is the 7,489th decimal digit of pi, where neodymium ends, and then the ending of where promethium would end, 61, would be two digits past that at 7,491. So folks, we're getting into true math here. It's maybe a little bit boring for some of you, but numbers make up our matrix. They make up our reality. So the two numbers matching neodymium and promethium through the string of pi is 7489 and 7491. It's the separation point. When you say that through numerology using, look at these, I even included the a reduction and the septenary. 417 for the English ordinal, that's a match to Lucifer. 183 is a match to tungsten and illumination. 144, 144,000, and 161 is the golden ratio. So folks, it's telling us, Pi's telling us, the separating point between 60 and 61, between these two, and here's your outcomes. What about the cards and numerology, folks? We're going to get back to the golden ratio. You bet your bottom dollar. That's what this presentation is a lot about. But, folks, I couldn't leave this out. This is important. And again, these cards didn't even come out to the 13th to 14th century. But, yeah, here we are. Showing the connections clear as to why our game of life is fixed. You know, here's the smallest pyramid again. It's the 30. The 30th card in, excuse me, in the lineage of the cards is the four of diamonds. 23 is Caffrey. 23 equals crown. Who would wear the crown? Well, of course, the pyramid in the middle. Has the highest slope degree, 53 degrees. But anyway, 10 of clubs, 23rd card. And then Khufu, the largest, is the 27 in numerology and the ace of diamonds. So when you say those three cards, four diamonds, 10 clubs, ace diamonds, we get a 121 outcome, which again is tied to the all-seeing eye of Horus antimony which is all tied to ancient egypt this is where this symbol came from I'm not trying to make this stuff up this is where the symbol came from what about the tarot in this well the 30th card in the tarot without using the Fool as the 22nd card, the graph that I showed earlier, is the Nine of Wands. The 23rd card, Caffrey's card, is the Two of Wands. Look at the symbology on that. If you're sitting in the middle of the three pyramids, you know, isn't this card fitting? And then, of course, the Great Pyramid of Khufu is the Six of Wands. 27, 27th card. What's interesting is here's your six and here's your nine. That's 96, yin yang, holding in the number two, which is magnetic because it's two, one, one. See the two poles, the two wands, the guy holding the world in his hands. That's what this card means. It's got the world in the palm of your hands very fitting and then go down to the numerology and look at this you want to finalize it put a nail in the coffin on how this world works again those cards nine of wands two of wands six of wands it equals the number 144 
As in 144,000 people, folks, you know what the 144 is. And of course, it's tied to the element Promethium. Promethium is an interesting element because it's associated with the Greek mythology of Prometheus stealing the fire and giving it to the humans. I mean, it's just fascinating when you look at this stuff. And that's what we're going to talk about. That we're going to because this ha, this is going to go into pi uh, five. This is going to go into the golden ratio and the great pyramid, folks. Promethium sixty one. Remember, sixty and sixty one were the two numbers for the latitude longitude. X marks the spot. They sit on specific ley lines. So Promethium was produced in nineteen forty five. The location was Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And there's the latitude longitude of Oak Ridge. When you add up Oak Ridge, you're going to get 120.28. 120, folks. That's tied. If you go and study Solomon's Temple, the measurements are 60 by 20. That is 120. So let's go a little bit further. Where's the 120 come into play? 0.28. Well, right there again. Here it is again, because antimony has multiple weights. 121 is its average, but 120 is its most abundant. And there it is. It's 120 tied to Promethium, tied to the latitude longitude of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And of course, let's not forget that we'll throw nickel in there because there's the 28. Old Saint Nick, this is called Devil's Copper. And then when you do the numerology on those two elements, matching the uh, matching the um, location of where Promethium was first manufactured or discovered, antimony nickel is 47, which is tetragrammaton. I, I didn't even want to have to throw that in there. Again, antimony, 28, matching that of Lucifer. I mean, nickel's 19, 19's the sun card. Lucifer's the light bringer. It's a lot of connections here. And there's the all-seeing eye, folks. This is, you know, Promethium, all-seeing eye, antimony, tied to antimony. I mean, folks, let's not forget 61 is the mirror of the 16 and how many days of creation that we're told? One through six. 61 is the mirror of that. Well, I've been, I've been tinkering with this keyhole. Is this what the Great Pyramid is? A keyhole. I mean, keyhole is 81 and 28, and that's a match of Horus, which is right here. That's the all-seeing eye of Horus. Prometheum's tied to the keyhole, which is Horus, which is tied to Lucifer. And there it is. I mean, it's dead center with a pyramid, which is in our brains. Splice, cut your brain in half. And that brings me into this, folks. Stick with me. This is going to get interesting. I told you you have to separate the numbers, 60 and 61, because... That is the two numbers that are associated with the latitude longitude of the pyramids. Well, I've discovered that the pyramids are all linked to the tree of knowledge and the tree of life, the two trees. And here we go. I mean, this is the original spelling of the trees, folks, in Hebrew slash Aramaic. This is tree spelled out, so we can separate that. But knowledge or wisdom is right there. So tree is 34, which is tied to selenium, which is tied to the moon. But nonetheless, look at what the outcome is total. Tree of knowledge is 81, which is a match of Horus, which is a match of keyhole. So when we bite that apple, is that where we can get out of this game is by no accurate knowledge and wisdom. 
And let's not forget, you know, I mean, this means knowledge or wisdom, and that's 47, which is silver. 47's tetragrammaton. 106 is promethium, because promethium, remember, has 61 protons. And there it is, with the zero there. What about the tree of life? And I'm just going, you can go type in tree of life biblical. And this is where you're going to find the information from. I'll splash it up on the screen for you. But the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and bad, those in Wikipedia, that's where I got these from. And I confirmed it to make sure that I had it right. But again, you know, here's tree. And then here's life. And it's 46. So now we have 47 with the tree of knowledge and 46 with the tree of life. Total tree of life is 80. Total tree of knowledge is 81. So you see, I'm showing this because not only are these trees embedded into the pyramid, but remember, the pyramid, the latitude, longitude, 60 and 61. The tree of knowledge and tree of life, 80 and 81. And the thing about the 80 and the 81, folks, is bingo. 80 plus 81 is 161, and that's the golden ratio. And that's, you know, that's, that's phi. I mean, this is the Greek symbol of the, this is the 21st letter in the Greek alphabet. And it has different variations. This is more for the, um, for the scientific measurements of it and whatnot. So the letter in the alphabet's a little different. It spins and crosses over, but this one's solid. But it does this not look like a zero and a one? Which is binary, the only number of its kind, the one and zero, male and female, androgynous. And we're talking about two trees. And they're embedded to this symbol right there. And the golden ratio. Which is all over nature. This is the original spellings, folks. Let's keep going. So then we bring in 46 and 47. Again, I mean, it's 80 and 81. It's 161 total. But then we have 46 and 47. Where does that come into play? Right there. It's linked to the planet Saturn because 46 and 47 equals the number 93. And that's Saturn in the English. And then Saturn is 21 in the Chaldean. And there it is in the string of pi because the numeric string 21 appears at the 93rd decimal digit. Right there is a direct match of both spellings in different ciphers. So do you think that Saturn is the keeper of both trees? Kronos, Father Time, AKA Yahweh, the Yod, YHVH. Now we're getting into the pyramids because the pyramids have everything to do with this. And again, you know, the, 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 the 21st Greek letter is this one right here, and it's, it's linked to Saturn. And there's, you know, a, a little rendition I made. The, the tree coming out both ends. Tree of knowledge, the tree of life. But could it be, folks, that we've been bamboozled and the tree of life is not really the tree of life the tree of knowledge perhaps is where we will find our way out the tree of life may recycle you back in i don't know what is it you see but i mean here's the 21st card in the tarot matching that of saturn it's the world card it has the four faces of god talked about in ezekiel 1 verses 10 the ox, lion, eagle, man. Now we get into astrologies there. Astrology, symbology, Roman numerals. But look at this symbology here, folks. The one and the zero, the binary number. Quantum. 
And this is where the pyramids come into play. I had to show the tree of life and knowledge, which yeah, you're probably saying, what the hell is he bringing this in for? But look at, look at where it's tied to. The three pyramids that make up this trilogy in Giza, in Egypt, there are the names. And on the two ciphers, it's a direct match. 204 in the English, 80 in the Chaldean. Well, 80's right there for the Tree of Life. And then 204 is right there for the Tree of Knowledge. And it's right there. It's both of them. It knocks out both using these two ciphers. And that's why I'm saying the Great Pyramids, or the Great, the great Pyramid and the Pyramids, are the tree of life and tree of knowledge. They're both. Wisdom. And you could always even break this down too. I didn't even, I could have added this stuff in. It just goes so deep. But let me continue here, folks, because I got some more to go. Let's get into the coordinates, the ley line that this pyramid sits on, the Great Pyramid of Giza. The one that's talked about, the king and queen chambers, what, it's, what is it all about? And I'm going to get into that. But again, here is the total of the latitude longitude. It's not just 60, but it's 61. Prometheum, the Greek mythology about the gods stealing the fire and giving it to the humans. I mean, look at the number 61, folks. It's the 18th prime number. I mean, you know, some of you love that 108. Well, I mean, the 18 is linked right to that 108. I mean, there's a reason why there's 108 rosary beads. If you're a Catholic. I mean, again, that's the days of creation. The flip side of it. 16, 61, that's 77. Master number 77, which is linked to Iridium, which is linked to the rainbow. What about breaking it down using the elements? Prometheum is 61. This is the total, 61.1134. Well, here it is through the alchemical representations. It's Prometheum, hydrogen, hydrogen, lithium, beryllium. When you add those up, you get 162.957. You take 162 and you add the 957, the male, female together, you get the number 1119. Big deal right here. Big deal. Now let's get into the measurements because this is important. And these are these are my theories, by the way. I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying it's a possibility. You go and look up the measurements of the Great Pyramid and you're not going to see these numbers. You're going to see 280 royal cubits and 440 royal cubits. Now, they don't really know the exacts because the limestone's been worn away and there's been a lot of corrosion and all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, do you really believe everything that you read that's on Wikipedia? Got to use some kind of logic. So again, this is just a theory I'm throwing out there, but I'm going to support it with numbers and math. So after researching this, it's very possible that it's 283 royal cubits high. And the reason why is because 283 is the 61st prime number. Remember, it's going up into the heaven. It's pointing to upstairs pointing upwards and then the 457 for the base is the 88th prime number and most of you know what the 88 is all about it's a big deal 440 is not even a prime number neither is 280 so I feel these have merit folks that's why I'm showing you these let's keep going support it a little more so 281, 283 and 457 is, again, let's stick 61 right there. 61 is 283, the height, and 88 is the base. 
61 and 88 are the two prime numbers that make up the possible real measurements of this great pyramid of Giza. So then we bring in the alchemical representations of that. We have radium and promethium. I mean, this is Ra we're talking about, which is all about Egypt. And then promethium, 88 and 61. And when you say that, get the number 64, which is why I have the double helix in the background. This is our DNA. 64 possible codons in our DNA. So this is a very good possibility that these measurements are what they really supposed to be. What about when you add them up, these two? Base and height through the prime numbers. Get the number 370. 370 appears at the 555th decimal digit of pi. And I already showed that's the Washington Monument's height. So does this have merit, folks? I mean, 37 is tied to the Jack of Diamonds. That's the card for the United States of America. So the height, folks, the height, 283 royal cubits, 61st prime number. And remember, 61 is 144, which, you know, I mean, they talk about, talk about the chosen ones, the 144,000, the chosen ones. Is that what they meant? I mean, if you take 457, you subtract 283, you're going to get 174, which is Lutetium, which is Lucifer. The measurements, subtract it. Right there, 741 Manly P. Hall. Right there, if you subtract the base to height, it's 174. What about if you divide it? If you divide 457 by 283, you're going to get the golden ratio. Then if you flip it and do it the opposite of division, you get 0.61. I don't even think I was even necessary to throw that in there, but this is kind of the correct way to do it. But nonetheless, look at the outcomes. It's the golden ratio. You're not going to get that with 280 and 440. So what is it that you saw during this presentation? What did you see? So something you picked up that I didn't see. So anyway, folks, that's all I got for today. I've been jumping around. My apologies. A lot of information. What is it that you saw during this presentation? My name is Logan. This is Decode Your Reality. Thank you so very much for watching.